Good morning, good morning. It's Pastor Callie. No, uh, November. I don't know why I keep wanting to say November. Lord, we don't want that much time to go by. It's March 18th. We are marching on to victory. We are in the month that we're actually being birthed into our destiny. In the spirit, many of you will walk out, begin to walk it out in the actual, uh, in the natural as well as the supernatural. But this is a birthing month. Uh, on the Hebrew calendar. This is the month that the children of Israel walked out of Egypt with all the gold, all the silver, all their children, all their livestock. They had been in bondage for hundreds of years and they walked out free to go to start heading toward the promised land. And this is our month in the spirit to walk out free. So it's very important what you say this month, what you declare this month, it's very important that you declare uh, the word of the Lord. So I just want to encourage you this morning to uh, sign on and pray. Um, God is going to do something so special today. He's going to do something so special and so amazing. Uh, I've got some scriptures that God gave me early this morning, and I cannot wait to share them with you. Lord, I just thank you for the opportunity to pray this morning. I thank you for the opportunity to seek your face. Holy Spirit, we love you. We love you. We honor you. We give you praise and glory. We give you honor. On this beautiful Thursday morning, there is none like you, Father. There is none like you. We give you honor. We give you praise. We give you glory. We worship you, Father. We worship you on this beautiful Thursday morning. We thank you, Lord, for the miracles that are taking place across this month. This is March 18th, and we are marching forward into our destiny. We are marching forward into our healing. We are marching forward into everything that God has promised us. We are mar marching forward. We're no longer going backward. We're not standing still, but we are going forward because you are a God of forward. You are a God that, that propels us forward. And Lord, I just declare and decree that the Spirit that your spirit is just flooding these rooms, flooding these houses, flooding these living rooms, these bedrooms, wherever these ladies are at today, God, that your spirit is just touching them and that they feel your power today and that they hear your voice today and that they're just being encouraged by the Holy Ghost. I see God, he has literally sent forth angels to minister to you today. I believe that everybody that signs on today, that there's literally going to be an angel ministering to you today. This is a very special day. This is a very special day. And so I want to encourage you to share the broadcast. I want to encourage you to share the broadcast and say, pray with us. Miracles are going to happen today. Many of you are going to get assignments today. Many of you will ex uh, literally experience extreme breakthrough in the spirit. Something's going to happen in the spirit that God is going to catapult you into the next seasons of your life, into the next, to the next piece of your story, the next part of your destiny. We are in a marching forward motion. God's church is going forward. The American church is going forward. The American church is arising to prayer. The American church is arising to uh, be everything that God has called her to be. The church worldwide is arising. Uh, revival fires are beginning to burn across America. I just thank you, Lord, that a desire for prayer is going to just literally envelop us so strong that we will want to pray literally morning, noon, and night, that we will want to spend hours in prayer. God, that you will wake us up in the middle of the night and the Spirit of God will just just touch us and move on us. And we will lay before you, Lord, praying, wailing, interceding for a nation, interceding for our family, interceding, God, for our churches, interceding for our cities, our nations, our nation, Lord, our counties, our states. 
God, we pray for America today. I want you ladies to just join with me right now. We pray for America today. We pray for the salvation of America. We pray for the healing of America. We pray, God, that you would root out all evil and that you would not only expose it, but you would root, out, root it out and dismantle it. It's one thing to expose it, but God, we ask you to dismantle evil in America. Dismantle evil in every sphere of influence. Dismantle it, God. We ask you to put in righteous legislatures, righteous laws. We ask you to put in righteous governors. We ask you to put in righteous mayors. We ask you to put in righteous senators and congressmen. And God, we just pray for righteousness in our country. We pray for our government. We pray for our president. We pray, God, for everyone that holds any kind of political office, Lord. And we first ask you, Lord, if their hearts are not right, that you make their hearts right. God, that you deal with them, that you call them, that you speak to them and let them draw not unto you, Lord. Give them a space and a time to repent because you are a good God. But Lord, if there's anyone that won't repent, then we ask you to put someone in, remove them from office and put someone in that will live according to your word, that will rule according to your word, that will care about the people. I pray for entertainment in America. I pray, God, that you would clean entertainment up, that you would clean up our movies, you would clean up our music, you would clean up every every type of entertainment, God, that your spirit would just raise up holy, holy, righteous entertainers, entertainers that are sold out to you, God. Give them a voice. Dismantle the evil ones. Dismantle the ones that will not change, God, and up, Lord, uplift the ones that will put you first, that will declare you as king and lord of lords over this nation i pray for the education system i pray god that you would you would give those in power a time and a space to repent and let us see much salvation in people's lives that are in authority but lord if they won't repent then put put in righteous educators, righteous leaders in our colleges, in our schools, in our high school, in our middle schools, in our elementaries. God, we ask you that you would literally cleanse every part of our communities, cleanse every part of our communities. We pray for the businessmen, the businessmen, the movers and shakers in this nation, the, the men and women that are called to make money and to give, uh, to employ thousands God, let righteousness reign in our business sector, in our economic sector. Let righteousness and holiness reign. God, we just ask you to bless. We ask you to bless and let righteousness and holiness reign in every part of our country, in every sector, in every sphere of influence. In the church of the living God, in the fivefold ministry, let righteousness and holiness reign, God. Oh, God, I'm asking you, Lord, to deal, to wash, to cleanse, to let your fivefold ministry, to let the Christians across this nation be sold out to you, Lord. Let them be sold out to you, Lord. Don't let any of us walk double lives. Don't let any of us walk one way at home, another way in public, one way in church, another way in private. But God, let us be sold out to your kingdom. Let us be sold out to righteousness. Let us be sold out to holiness. Let us be sold out to you, to you. Because when we're sold out to you, Lord, your spirit begins to wash us and cleanse us and purify us. And we no longer live anything that's incongruent with your word. I pray that your word would be hid in my heart that I not, might not sin against thee. Let your word be hid in my heart that I might not sin against you, Lord. Let your word be a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. Let your word, God, ring so loud in my ears as I go and I walk through my day and I go out to minister and I get on the phone to call people and check on them and I 
you know, reach out to witness, God, let your word be a lamp unto my feet. I ask you, God, to bring up your word, bring up remembrance of your word. Give us a passion for your word, Lord. Give us a passion for your word. Give us a passion for truth. Your truth triumphs all things. Your truth triumphs all things. Lord, I just declare that we will be women of truth. We will be women of holiness. We will be women of faith. We will be women that have set our face like a flint to do the will, purpose, and plan of God. And I just thank you, God, that we will be strong women. I want to tell you a little bit today about my testimony because I felt so led. First of all, there is a new prophetic word out called the Mantle of Deborah by, by Nate and Christy Johnston. Uh, I will post that today in the comments. I want somebody to go find it. I, I could not find a prophetic word that more fits me, my heart, what God has called me to do, what God has called you to do, and what God has called me and Jenny to do in raising up a million women, and I believe ultimately 10 million women, to stand, believe, and, and, and be the redeemed of the Lord. And, and, you know, Jenny had a word, uh, we put a book together called Wounded Wombs. And in that book, there are testimonies of women, and I'm one of the women in that book, that, that uh, suffered uh, loss from the enemy. Uh, and, I, you know, the enemy uh, trapped me, and, and, and I fell for a lie. I fell for a lie, and it was a short time in my life, but, uh, but, but God redeemed me, and God set me free, but one of the things that the Lord spoke to Jenny when we were fleshing all of this out and what God had called us to do, he said, um, he said, I'm healing my, he said, I'm healing my daughters by by, by the, he said, I'm taking my daughters to the refreshing waters of healing. He said, I'm healing my daughters. And he said, I'm healing those that have had abortions and delivering them and setting them free. That have had endometriosis, that could not get pregnant, that have been raped, that have, uh, that have uh, had all kinds of issues. Uh, those who, who got pregnant out of wedlock, whether you aborted or you didn't abort, you, you felt the shame of what you did. He said, I'm taking those wounded wounds. And he said, I'm going to heal them. I'm going to deliver them. I'm going to set them free. And then I'm going to begin to gather them. And that is your most dependable warriors. That was the prophetic word that God gave Jenny. That is your most dependable warriors. And, and I, it, my heart leaps because it is. God has called us to not only win the lost ladies, we are to win women. And we are to begin to reach out to our women all around us and call them into a place of prayer, to, to a place of prayer. But we are also called, we are also called to gather women to pray and to call them into the movement, call them into the movement. And uh, if someone for me would, I, I, at the top of this broadcast, is going to be everything you need to know about the next, uh, the next Her Voice uh, uh, event we have going in Joplin. It'll tell you how to join the movement. If you'll type in that number, put in Her Voice, you can join the movement. You can put in boots on the ground too, and they'll find places for you to work and get involved. But God is calling a million women across America, and that's just the remnant, because I believe there will be 10 million before we're through. And God is breathing on this thing. He is breathing by the, by the Spirit. You have been called into a supernatural uh, a mantle. There has been a supernatural mantle, and it's the mantle of Deborah, and it's the mantle of Esther. And we're a company. We are a company of Deborah's and Esther's. We are a company. Let me say it again. We are a company. Um, I'm going to give you a tiny bit of my testimony, and, and then we're going to pray. And ladies, if you'll go on and share the broadcast, it's very important. It's put Pastor Callie's giving some of her testimony. Pastor Callie's sharing some of her testimony. And then I'm going to declare the word of the Lord. We are a company of Deborah's and Esther's, and God is calling us 
to raise up women all across America. He is calling us, so we invite them into this prayer meeting. We invite them into Word on Wednesday with Jenny. We invite them into our Sunday night power hour of prayer with, with Jenny Donnelly and her, and her tribe out of Portland. We invite them into the Her Voice events that are across the nation. And we've got several that are already scheduled that we want you to get involved with. One in Joplin, one in Daytona, one in California, <clears throat> one in Chicago, um, and then, of course, we've got our one in Portland, and there'll probably be a couple more scheduled before uh, the middle of the year, and then we'll have a slew of them scheduled in the second half of the year. But I want to give you my testimony because I believe my testimony is what God wants me to tell. Now, I may, I may not tell all of it, but I'm going to give you some of it. As a young woman, I got saved in a Pentecostal, a classical Pentecostal church. Uh, <clears throat> many things about that church that were beautiful. And the, one of the things that I learned in that, in that church and under my pastors and under the leaders that were over me at that time is I learned how to pray. At a very young age, Pastor Callie learned how to pray. I can't say that I was under any kind of seminar where I was, <clears throat> and I really want you to share this broadcast, ladies. Really want you to share this broadcast. It's really important. Really important. But I learned how to pray. Um, and I, it was caught more than it was taught. And that's why it's so important for you to pray with me every morning and pray with the ladies that I bring because you're going to catch things that can't be taught. Let me say this again. Prayer is as much caught as it is taught. You, you, have, you have to catch it. And that's why I believe the Lord gave me such a mandate about praying daily online because he wanted, he wanted people to have a place to plug in to catch the spirit of prayer, to catch the anointing, to catch intercession, to catch it. And so it is as much caught as it is taught. And so if you will, if you will be faithful to pray with me every day, whether you can pray in the morning or you pray on a replay, I'm telling you, it's not just because it's me. There's many pastors, wives, many leaders that are praying. I include lots. I have prayer now going morning, noon, and night. But it, you will catch the fire. You will catch the intercession, you will catch it. And so I, that's how I was raised in the Holy Ghost with a bunch of women that would go into a prayer room for hours and pray, pray. Me and Pastor Cindy, that's why we're very similar in our prayer life. We would go as young teenagers, as young women, into these prayer rooms with these older seasoned saints and they would not pray 15 minutes, 30 minutes, they'd pray hours and they would just wail and worship and intercede and you would know when when God had put something in their belly and they would pray until they got victory and they would pray in the spirit until victory broke out. They could feel it and so I caught it. I can't explain it. Now we try to explain a lot of it and I'm not saying that's bad, but I caught it. And so as a very young woman, I was a praying woman. I was a very dedicated praying woman. And uh, one time I went to the prayer room and I was interceding and God said, Callie, I want you to go to Isaiah 54. And I went to Isaiah 54 and I began to read Isaiah 54 and I began to weep uncontrollably. I did not quite know what God was trying to tell me. I did not quite understand the magnitude of what I was going to be facing in the next few years of my life. And I can look back, ladies, and I'm telling you, some of the, a lot of the trauma that I felt was at, at the result of my own hand. It was my own doing. It was my own bad choices. But God was trying to warn me ahead of time that, Callie, my hand is on you, and it might get bad for a while, but I'm going to redeem you. And I didn't understand the magnitude of it, but I will tell you that as I began to read this chapter, I began to weep so uncontrollably. The only thing I can liken it to is when Jesus told Peter, he said, you're going to deny me three times. And Peter said, no, 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 I'll never deny you. Not me. These dudes may deny you, but I'll never deny you. 
And before the night was over, he did exactly what God said. He did exactly what Jesus told him. But Jesus said, Peter, I have prayed for you. I have prayed for you. And you're not going to slip out of my hand. You're not going to slip out of my hand. I have interceded for you. And that's how I felt. I didn't know what this meant. But I knew God was telling me that his hand was going to be on me all of my life. And no matter what happened, no matter what, what, what happened in my life, he was going to protect me. And when I heard the prophetic word about Deborah, the mantle of Deborah, the two scriptures... Two of the scriptures that they went to were out of Isaiah 54 and Psalm 68, which are literally my life scriptures. You know I've been quoting Psalm 68 about warring women. I've been quoting that. I'm telling you, God is raising up a company, a company, a million Debras. There are everywhere all, all across America. There are women that God is healing them and delivering them and set them free. And he is raising up their voice. And I want to read Isaiah 54. This is my, this is a, a life chapter for me. I was a young 20 something year old woman when God gave me this. And when I tell you, I begin to cry uncontrollably. I did not understand the magnitude of how this would live out in my life. I was a woman with children, so I didn't understand actually everything about this prophetic word or this word out of the Bible. But it says, sing, O barren, you who have not born. So see, I'd had children, but God was showing me something different. Break forth into, into singing and cry aloud. You have not labored with child. You who have... You who have not labored with child, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married woman, says the Lord. Now, I was a married woman with, with children, so I did not understand this. But I knew this was for me. Enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. For you shall expand to the right and to the left, and your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited. It goes on to say this. Do not fear, for you will not be ashamed. You will not be ashamed. Neither be disgraced, for you will not be put in shame. For you will forget the shame of your youth. And when, when he said, forget the shame of their, of their youth. Now, I was a young woman there. I did not understand. But within about two years, things have begun to unravel in my life. And you will not remember the reproach of your widowhood anymore. For your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. And your redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. He is called the God of the whole earth. For the Lord has called you like a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit. Like a youthful wife, when you were refused, says your Lord. For a moment I have forsaken you, but with great mercies. And when I got to this, I cannot explain to you. I was in my late, I was actually in my late 20s, almost to turn 30. With great mercies I will gather you. With a little wrath I have hid my face from you for a moment, but with everlasting kindness I will have mercy on you, says the Lord your Redeemer. For this is like the waters of Noah to me, for I have sworn that the waters of Noah would no longer cover the earth. So have I sworn that I will not be angry with you nor rebuke you. For the mountains shall depart and the hills for the mountains shall depart and the hills shall uh, the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from you, nor shall my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord, who has mercy on you. So he began to explain to me, O oh, you afflicted one, tossed and tempted and not comforted. So what he was telling me is there's something coming. There's something coming. There's something coming, Callie. There's something coming. You're going to feel forsaken. You're going to be alone. I knew I was going to be single for a long time. I did not understand. I did not understand, but I knew it. I, that was before I actually understood I was prophetic, but I knew that I was headed for a time of great testing and great sorrow. 
Behold, I will lay your stones on colorful gems and lay your foundations with sapphires. I will make your pinnacles of rubies, your gates of crystal, and all your walls precious stones. Listen to this. All your children will be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. In righteousness you shall be established. You shall be far from oppression, for, for you shall not fear and from terror, for shall not come near you. Indeed, they shall surely assemble, but not because of me. Whoever assembles against you shall fall by your, uh, for your sake. Behold, I have created the blacksmith who blows the coals in the fire, who brings forth an instrument for his work, and I have created the spoiler to destroy. No weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. I knew I was headed for a time of testing and trouble. And some of it was going to be from my own hand, from my own choices. Some of it I would have no control over. But God was giving me a promise. And when I listened to that word, my Nate and Christy Johnson, I realized that was a word for Mother's of Zion and for her voice. That was our word. That is, it pulls scriptures talking about the stakes, lengthen your cords, strengthen your stakes. We're in a time that God is expanding us. He is stretching us. He is stretching us in prayer. He is stretching us in fasting. He is stretching us in faith. And he has called and anointed us to do the work of the Lord. Uh, within a couple of years of that, uh, our church went through a terrible split. And it was, uh, it was terrible. And uh, there was a lot of fallout from that. And a lot of people lost their way. And really, a lot of people never came back to the Lord. During that time, we, we saw many people suffer. There was a lot of marriages that suffered. Mine was one of them. And my husband and I ended up uh, separating and, uh, at that time. And um, I was so, so disappointed. Because Pastor Kelly only planned to be married one time. And I was so disappointed. And I got out of church for about a year, year and a half. And, uh, I had to, you know, I, I'd only done two, I literally only had two dreams my whole life. Um, uh, one was to be a country singer, big surprise, huh? And, uh, the second one was to do the work of the ministry after I got saved. And I gladly laid down any dream of entertainment after I got saved because, you know, we were in a real strict movement. You didn't listen to any kind of secular music. You only listened to Christian music and, um. So I got, and then once I got in church and many years, we just helped our pastor build the church. We worked and helped and we were glad to do it. And, uh, then I find myself, uh, divorce, going through a divorce, not divorce, but going through a divorce, separated, going through a divorce. And now I've got to learn how to, um, take care of my children outside of church. The only thing I'd ever done is help my pastors and worked in the church. I never had a regular job. My husband is one that worked outside of the home. And so I find myself a single woman with my children and forsaken is how I felt. Absolutely. Um, and I had to get, I had to learn something. So I, 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 uh, had a friend in East Texas that said, Kelly, you'd be a great salesman. You need to learn how to sell insurance. And so I went to uh, a training and I took an insurance test and started selling insurance. And I ended up, um, you know, not going to church for that year and a half. I ended up getting pregnant with my baby girl. And um, I wasn't married. I wasn't even completely divorced. We were separated and we were, had filed, but I wasn't divorced. I got pregnant with Rachel and uh, I was going to abort my baby. I, I was that, I was that, I was that messed up. And I knew it was sin. I was under no illusion. I know, I knew what the Bible said. I wasn't deceived or telling myself that it was some sort of a, you know, uh, just nothing. I knew that if I, 
if I went and had my baby aborted, that it was sin and it was murder. I was, I was not deceived. But uh, in the course of a few days, uh, uh, the Spirit of God woke me up in the middle of the night and with a phone call from a pastor's wife who gave me a prophetic word and told me that, that if I, uh, she just said, I had a dream and in the dream I, I heard the Lord say, I saw your face and I heard the Lord say, yeah, Callie's in trouble. And she goes, in my day when a woman was in trouble, she's pregnant out of wedlock. And, and she said, uh, is that the case? And I said, yes, ma'am. And uh, she didn't even know what was going on. And she said, uh, she said, if you abort this baby, this, 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 and this will happen. She said, but if you face your sin and repent, this, 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 and this will happen. I felt the fear of the Lord and the mercies of the Lord all at the same time. I, I'll never, I've never had a feeling like that before, nor since. Uh, I knew God was giving me a promise, but I also knew there would be a, there would be a consequence because I was fully aware of the choice that I could make and what it would lead to. I repented that day, and uh, I fell on my face and repented that morning, early morning, and I decided to keep my baby. And I went the very next day, and I, uh, within a few days, and I told my ex-husband, or my soon-to-be ex-husband, and I told my children, and I faced my sin, and I started this Isaiah 54 journey, um, and I walked it out. I walked it out for like 15 years, and I had to find a new dream. I had to find a new path. Uh, I watched God take care of me in miraculous ways. I thought ministry would never be mine again. And I was happy to just do my new dream. I thought, well, I'll be a businesswoman and I'll be a good one. And so I literally just threw myself into work. And then I got back in church immediately, started taking my kids to church. I was in church every Sunday and I raised my kids in church and I just helped my pastors. Uh, there was a couple of different men that I helped for a few years, men and women that I love so much that I helped them with their churches and then travel with Todd and Cindy because they were traveling full time. And then uh, after about 15 years, God began to speak to me to come back into full time ministry and he opened the door. So here I am. But I'm telling you right now that there's nothing you've done that disqualifies you. If God, as long as you're living and breathing, God's will, purpose, and plan can be done in your life. All it takes is, I'm sorry, and I repent, and I here I am, Lord. Take what you have, take what I have, what I am, and use me for your glory. And I'm telling you, there's a million Callies out there. There's a million you, whatever your name is today. There's a million of them that have been wounded by the enemy, that have been feel like that they're hopeless. They feel like they can't do anything for the Lord. But God is not only going to redeem them. But he is going to use them powerfully. He's going to raise them up for the glory of the Lord. And they are going to begin to declare the word of the Lord. This is, this is the real women's movement. Do you hear me? This is the real one. This is the God-breathed women's movement. This is the God-ordained women that believe the Bible. Women that believe the Bible. Women that believe that Jesus is Lord. Women that love their husbands, women that love their pastors, women that, that honor authority, women that know that a woman under authority has authority, women that honor God's authority. And so I'm telling you, we are in a season where God is saying, I want you to go out and I want you to gather them. That baby girl is now the country singer. See what? <laughs> the, the, the way God works. When I did the right thing, he redeemed not only my destiny, but he redeemed the destiny that I had as a little girl, the desire I had as a little girl through her. So I, it's even more enjoyable to watch her do what she's doing. That's something I wanted to do. So God said, you know what? When you choose me, every dream in your heart, I'm going to redeem. 
I'm going to redeem. I've been able to travel with her all over America. I've been able to see some of the most incredible things, do some of the things I dreamed of doing as a young woman. Watch her do it. Do you know what a joy that's been? God redeemed me ministerially wise. My sister and I and her husband, we started this church, and God has redeemed every bit of it. He has redeemed every ounce of it. And now I'm married to Pastor Bob. <laughs> he's like he's like Saint Bob. He's lived this life for Jesus his whole life. He went to Bible college. He's married to one woman. I love him so much. He's such a blessing. He's another portion of the redemption story. So I'm telling you, there's nothing that God can't redeem in your life. There's nothing that God can't do. And he wants to take us. And he wants us to sing our redemption song across America. He wants us to sing our redemption stories because they're waiting on us, girls. They're waiting on us to tell them the story of Jesus. They're waiting on us. Uh, I'm going to ask my husband to come lead the uh, communion. I want you to share this broadcast, and then I'm going to pray for you. I don't know how much battery I have. I sure don't want to lose you. I think oh, it said I had about 10, 10%. Oh, it's okay. Goodness. Go on and let's do this, baby. And we'll, <laughs> we'll do this. And... If we go out, we go out. We want to go out. And just... we go out blazing. <laughs> All right. Uh, get your communion, if you will. And uh, <laughs> then look at, uh, let's see what I got, Matthew. Ladies, if you'll share the broadcast and tell people that we are to pray with us now or pray with us on replay. Matthew 26, verse 26. While they were eating, Jesus took bread and gave thanks and he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body, which was given for you. Thank you, Jesus, for your body given as a sacrifice as a lamb, taking away the sins of the world, taking away sickness, disease, fear, worry, Amen. anxiety, Amen. all the things that go with sin, Jesus bore it away, carried Amen. it away. Okay. Thank you. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and offered it to them, saying, Drink from it, yes. all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until the day when I drink it anew, with you in my in my kingdom, with my Father. Yes, Lord. Thank you for your blood, Lord Jesus, that washes us from all sins, makes us righteous, holy, puts us in position yes, next Lord. to you. Yes, Lord. With the Father, brings us into the covenant yes, with Lord. the family, makes us sons and daughters. We thank you for the blood. Yes, Lord. And your righteousness. Um. Since we were talking about redemption, I just wanted to read one scripture. Colossians 1, starting with verse 12. Give thanks to the Father who has qualified you yes. to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. Yes, Lord. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves. Yes. In whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Redemption means to be bought with a price. It means to be bought back. We were so we were sold out by sin to the enemy and his ways. Jesus bought us back. Yes, Lord. We belong to him and he turns everything back around that we lost and gives us more in return. Amen. Amen. Lord, I just declare the blessing of the Lord over every one of these women today. I declare that they're the head, not the tail, the first, not the last. I declare that everything they set their hand to do is blessed. I thank you, Lord. The Lord spoke to me and said that he was giving out mantles during the month of March. And there's gifts of healing. There's gifts of deliverance. There's gifts of prophecy. Um, there's all kinds of gifts that the Lord is pouring out. And he just needs you to say yes. He just needs you to say yes. So, Lord, I just thank you, Lord, for your handmaids that they're saying yes. They're saying yes to you. They're saying yes to you. I thank you for healing everyone that's that's represented here, anyone that's sick or that has a family member that's sick, we thank you for healing them. 
We thank you, Lord, for what we're go what you're going to do in Joplin. I want to encourage you, if you're anywhere, Joplin, Missouri, get there. Plane, train, automobile, get there. Uh, I really sense that the fire of God is going to manifest in Joplin. Uh, this morning I was praying and I just I saw the fire of God manifesting in Joplin. So I want to encourage you, get out to Joplin. God is going to do something so, so uh, magnificent at that event. And I just want to encourage you, this is also the month to sow a first fruits offering. I want to encourage you to do that. And this is not your tithe. Your tithe goes to your local church, but a first fruits offering. Uh, every year we do this, and I have seen God do supernatural things for me during this time. Uh, on the top of this broadcast, you you can if you want to give towards her voice, this is a place where you can do it. We love you. We honor you. And uh, we'll see you in the morning. Pastor Teresa Verdecchio is going to be leading in the morning. She is a powerhouse. And, uh, and then I'll see you at noon. I'm probably going to sign on around noon and pray again today. Love you so much. God bless.